Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A special welcome to our guests and visitors, both in-house and online. We are glad that you are here as the Holy Spirit gathers us today so that we might be an offering of our full selves to God for the sake of the world. A few announcements for you. There is a green insert with uh, some happenings of the week here at St. Paul and in our community that I commend for you to even take home and hang it on your refrigerator, put it on your nightstand, on your kitchen table, wherever you're going to see it as a reminder throughout the week would be great. Confirmation youth, I see you. Give me a wave. Couple up there, over here. We are going to be meeting after fellowship time, so take time to have a refreshment today, and then we'll come back in the sanctuary to practice for our great worship service next weekend. Next weekend, uh, Reagan Kinsler will affirm her baptism and the promises that were made at baptism in her confirmation day, and she will share a faith statement uh, with you all as well. And so uh, it's Reformation Day, and so in the tradition of the church for Confirmation Day and Reformation Day, we invite you to wear the color red, as our pyramids will also be red next Sunday, just as a way to flood this place with the Holy Spirit and some red in celebration. Our In Stitches group meets this week. Uh, you don't have to know how to sew. Perhaps if you know how to use a pair of scissors or tie a knot, you uh, could be a good asset to that group. It's a great time of fellowship and sharing. And uh, we have the visual fruit today uh, on our pews, the lovely quilts. This is a year's worth of labor for people who've been helping with those projects, along with some of our health care and school kits on display here uh, by the pulpit. And then when you come down for fellowship time today, you're going to notice there are two tables you can't sit at. Well, you could, but you're not going to have a place to set your coffee or your plate because it's filled with boxes that have already been packed with our school kits and uh, hygiene kits. So these are due to be shipped this week. And so today we have a special blessing for all that you see on display and all that is already prepared for shipment. So this is a great day of celebration because this is a, a labor of love right before you. If you get a little frigid today, it is okay to wrap yourself up in one of those quilts. <laughs> and if you happen to fall asleep in worship, I will forgive you. It's okay. All right, a few additional announcements. Um, this week, I am not able to do the chapel for the Lutheran Care Center kids on Thursday morning, so that has been canceled. I am looking for a few people who would be willing to help with that. That way, uh, when I have a conference or something out of town, I would not have to cancel for those little kids who look forward to hearing a Bible story, singing some songs, and praying. I'd be happy to train you for that. Um, but I need a few people who would serve as substitutes for that. Uh, see me and let me know if you'd be willing to serve on behalf of St. Paul in that capacity. Um, and... Three weeks, four weeks. Put a note in there. You saw it in your newsletters last week. Our annual voters meeting is scheduled for November 19th. There will be a uh, catered meal and ask you to bring a dish to pass for that. Um, we will do our regular voting of uh, vacancies on our council and our Senate Assembly delegates. And then we are tacking on a special meeting to that meeting to talk about some maintenance repairs that go beyond the council's uh, ability to approve because of the dollar amount necessary, specifically in heating and cooling. <laughs> so please plan to be present on November 19th for those meetings. Uh, Church Council President Bill Hammer has a couple of announcements he'd like to make today. Um, firstly, the, the tables are in. So the white tables have been uh, unpacked thanks to those who came out Friday evening and unpacked those. If you spoke for a table or chairs, please see Dwight home and call him. 
make arrangements to pick up the chairs or the tables that um, you have spoken for. Um, there are two tables still set up that have the, the sewing or the um, health kits and school kits on them. Those can go once they're the boxes are gone Thursday, I believe they're going out. They should be loaded Thursday evening. The rest of the tables are in the Parsonage garage. Um, there's a few chairs left upstairs in the closet, and then the rest of the chairs are downstairs in the basement. So please contact Dwight Bowman about um, paying for your chairs or tables and uh, arranging pickup times with him. Uh, secondly, if you're planning on helping with the trunk or treat or participating in the trunk or treat, I'd like to meet with you downstairs during fellowship briefly just to kind of see who, how many people we're going to have and just talk about a couple things that will be really, really short. And then lastly, I'd like um, Brent to come forward. You stay here too. Oh. <laughs> October is Pastor Appreciation Month. And on behalf of the congregation, we would like to thank both of you for shepherding us over the past year and past years. So we have a couple gifts for you. This doesn't look like a new wicker guitar. Well, the flowers are also for one of you. If you prefer the flowers, um, the flowers are also there for you as well. But thank you for all you've done for us over the past year and years. Thank you. I do love flowers, but Faye Winter knows this quite well. Brent really loves flowers too, and we are awful, often sent home with remnants that aren't going to make it till the next week. And uh, so, thank you for your gift. Uh, for pastors, October is a special month where it is uh, warms our heart to hear the words "thank you." And so I say thank you too, because we're in mission and ministry together. Two final announcements. I would love to invite you to a time of fellowship after worship. Mr. Brent is providing the refreshments today. Uh, so come on down after worship for a hot cup of coffee, some cold beverages, donuts, fruit, whatever is down there. Stay for a short time period, stay for a long time period. That space is yours to uh, visit with one another. And as always, there's an invitation to the table that comes to us from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The table behind me does not belong to St. Paul. It does not belong to the ELCA. It does not belong to myself or any pastor that has ever presided or will ever preside at that table. That table belongs to Jesus Christ and he welcomes all. So you are welcome to participate in the sacrament of Holy Communion today. Instructions are printed in your bulletin. All are welcome, regardless of understanding or age or religious denomination. And so for those of you joining us online, we invite you to prepare elements in your home um, as well as Jesus transcends all time and spaces to be with you at your table where you are gathered. Take a deep breath with me. Let's breathe in God's love and let's breathe out anything that separates us from that love. And I invite you to stand in body or spirit. <clears throat> Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you 
and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I invite any child of God, regardless of age, to come on forward. Today we are going to bless our quilts, school kits, and hygiene kits for our children's message time. It's a way of <coughs> connecting us not only together in Christ here at St. Paul, but clear across the growth globe for the children, specifically, who will receive school kits, and for them and their families who will be receiving uh, personal care kits, and for every individual who will be receiving these quilts. So you just come on up and gather around, Pastor Maria. You can pick up a couple of school kits. You can strap one on your back. We're going to bless one of these. You can hold one of those personal care kits, like a football if you want, however you want to do it. We're going to bless these today. And for those of you out there who uh, didn't get the memo that you're a child of God too and aren't coming up front here, uh, there's a quilt in front of you or behind you that way I would ask you to pay special attention to and to lay your hands on it for this blessing. But first, you know, Lutherans, we like to do aerobics. That's why we sit and stand so much in worship. We want to make sure you get that circulation Go into your legs and your arms and everywhere else that you don't fall asleep, especially when there's a cozy blanket. So uh, you look at ladies healthy and see if we got any participants or not, okay? So here's what we're going to do. I'm extending an invitation to the rest of you out here because us four ladies are already standing. We're already helping. I'm wondering... If you personally, yes, I'm talking to you, every single pair of double eyes that's looking at me through glasses or not, if you have worked even one time in the basement here at St. Paul and putting any of these quilts together, please stand up. One time, even one time. All right, look, they're listening, aren't they? All right. If you have even at one time or more tied knots in any of these blankets, regardless of the space. Any knot tires in here? All right. Anybody cut squares at home, in their own homes, cutting fabric? All right. Anyone storing fabric in their own home or shed or museum for the church? All of these things are true statements. There you go. All right. Uh, anyone who has sewed some of these backpacks that were handmade. Sometimes churches just buy them, but we make ours. Anyone sewing those at home? Anyone donated fabric for any of these beautiful quilts or backpacks? All right. We had a really fun time this summer learning about Lutheran World Relief watching some videos, seeing the faces of people across the world, and how we might be able to help them with school kits, hygiene kits, and quilts. And uh, we issued a challenge. Our church council chair, Bill Hammer, took a pie in the face last week because we met our challenge. So if you participated in that challenge and donated money to purchase a full school kit, which was $6 donation, or a full personal care kit, which was $11. If you participated in that, please stand up. All right, we're getting there. <laughs> All right, man, we got some good participation here. We gotta keep going though, because we're not done yet. If you help string these cool school <laughs> kit bags, uh, on a Sunday night and enjoyed a nice fellowship meal together, stand up if you're not already. All right? Raise your hand if you did that. 
Yeah, okay, you don't have to keep your hand up. I was just curious. There were 24 of us doing that, if I remember right. Okay, um, how else did we help? Oh yeah, probably the most important piece of it all. It takes many helping hands and servant hearts to do this work, but we can't do any of this work if we're not constantly in prayer as well. If you have ever prayed for Lutheran World Relief, for people in this church body, I invite you to stand up. Okay. It looks like most, if not all of us, are standing up. And if you're still seated, I am believing it's probably best for you to remain seated. Now look around. They say it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a lot of hands and servant hearts to make this happen. It looks to be like we have over 50 quilts here. We have 100 personal care kits. We have 200 school kits. Those are record-breaking numbers for us, right, Doris? School kits and hygiene kits are record-breaking numbers. Yes. All right, now I want you to look around because as the body of Christ, not only are we connected as church body, but much of this fabric was donated or sewn together by the saints who are no longer with us. Betty Morris, Irene Smith, people that we may have never met and their families knew that we do this work and they said, we have some material we would like to donate to your church. This is how the body of Christ stays connected together. Sometimes we're connected to people that we don't even know. That is a blessing. If you're standing, you can sit down now. All right. Ladies, y'all got a backpack or a quilt or a hygiene kit to do this blessing with me? Yeah, do you think they did a good job out there? Did you see how many people, how much up that takes? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Awesome. All right, let us pray. Gracious God, well, I'm going to back up, sorry. Place your hands on a quilt if it's in front of you. Ladies, you got your hands on your backpacks, school kit. Awesome. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we place our hands on these quilts, school kits, and personal care kits, we join giver and receiver, recognizing the unity of all your people in the body of Christ. We celebrate being children of God. We give thanks for the variety of gifts that compose these quilts, donations of fabric, thread, and sewing machines, the faithful people who cut the squares, design the patterns, sew the tops, iron the fabric, make backs and fillers, tie and stitch the binding, provide publicity, donate boxes, pack the quilts, bring food and share in fellowship to sustain the quilters, and for donations contributed for the shipping of these quilts and kits. We celebrate generosity. We give thanks for the fellowship of all who work together to make the quilts and kits and laughter and the shared stories for the joy of crafting something with one's own hands and heart for another and for the time to reflect and wonder about each recipient. We celebrate the gift of community we send these quilts and kits as a sign of God's love and blessing for each person who receives one, trusting that these quilts and kits will be a source of comfort and hope in the midst of disaster and fear, as a symbol of Christ's love to those who suffer, and as a reminder that each recipient is a beloved child of God. We pray that these quilts and kits will serve a useful purpose in the life of the recipient, that they will bring warmth in the cold, shelter from the sun and heat, 
a wall for a home, or a carrier for a few precious belongings. Bring comfort and help in personal care and educational opportunities for children. May this be a step in recovering one's life and a message of care from someone they may never meet. We celebrate in hope in the midst of life's trials. We remember those who have received our quilts and kits in the past, and we pray for their lives to have returned to stability. We celebrate the gift of life. We ask that generous and gracious God, that you would bless the fruits of our labor and the whole mission of Lutheran World Relief, that together we may minister to our neighbors in need. Bless all who give and all who receive as we are sown together in the unity of your Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, ladies. I would invite you, after worship, um, to walk by and make the sign of the cross on each quilt and choose a quilt or two and uh, help transport them down to the parish hall. And we ask you to put them on the tables on the far east side so that they will be packaged and ready to be sent on Thursday. The school kits and the hygiene kits also need to go down, but uh, as a sign of your blessing and hands upon them, go ahead and make the sign of the cross on them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I want to extend uh, one additional thank you to this practice. Doris Allison and Marsha Peterson are our two leaders who are charged with making this all happen. And so, Doris, would you just raise your hand? So people who don't know, wave it big. See Doris there. Marsha, wave your hand. Yeah. Thank you for engaging us in this wonderful mission opportunity and for keeping it going for many, many years here at St. Paul. All right. Guess what I have for you? Some cool stuff today. Your new devotional books just for kids are in. Would you like to have one of those? Do you have a friend that's in the pew next to you that maybe didn't want to come down today? Yeah, you want to take one for me? All right, and here you go. Great. Thank you, beloved children of God, for coming up today. You may return to your seats with your families, and we turn our hearts and minds to the Holy Scriptures. whose right hand I have grasped to subdue, subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel my chosen, I call you by your surname. I surname you though you do not know me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me there is no God. I arm you though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make wheel and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 96, verses 1 to 9, and is to be read responsibly by whole verses. Sing to the Lord a new song. 
Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. More to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, there are they are but idols. But you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificence are in your presence. Power and splendor are in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due to the holy name. Bring offerings and hand the forth of the Lord. Worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord, all the earth. Tell the God among the nations, the Lord is King, the one who made the world so firm that it cannot be moved, will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that there that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy at your coming, O Lord. For you come to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the people with your truth. Our second reading is from Thessalonians. Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy. To the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved of God, that he has chosen you because our message to the gospel came to you not in word alone only, but also in the power and the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and the Lord, for in, sp in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia, for the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not, whoops, but in every place your faith in God became known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of these regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and a true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show difference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test? 
you hypocrites, show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then Jesus said to them, whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperor's. Then Jesus said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. May be seated. A small child asked their parent this very important question. If you were driving your car down the road and an old person started to cross the road and a baby also started to crawl across the road, which one would you hit? That's right. I just asked and said, repeated what this child said. This child is asking, would you choose to hit an old person or a young person who's crossing the street if you couldn't avoid that? The child goes on to say, who would you hit? You can only choose one. Who would you hit? Whew, I'm glad I'm not the parent in this question. The parent, quite perplexed, stalled to answer the child. And the child says again, who would you hit? And the parent reluctantly replied, the old person. The child said, why? And the parent answered, well, because they are old and they have lived a long life. And a little baby is defenseless and hasn't lived much life. The child smiled as if they had a trick up their sleeve and said, do you know who I would hit? And the parent said, no. And the child said, I would have hit the brake. <laughs> The child said, I would have hit the brake. Life is filled with questions to which there is no easy answer. But often there is a third answer that is better than a this or that answer. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus is hit up once again with a toiling question. He's still in Jerusalem at the temple, and the Pharisees are once again badgering him. But this time, the Herodians are also there, and they're engaging him in this toiling question. But before they ask the question, they fluff Jesus up a bit. Oh, they fluff him up. They tell him, you're a good teacher. You show no partiality. Like, Hey, we know you're going to know the answer to this question because you're just so good, Jesus. And then they throw the question out there. Tell us what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? This maybe to us doesn't seem like a tricky question, but for Jesus it was. We need to keep in mind that the Pharisees represent the religious elite following their laws and their practices is really important to them above all things. And the Herodians, those would be representing the political power of the day, the Roman Empire, the Emperor Tiberius. So this question that is posed has to do with paying tax in the temple. And at that time, if you were paying the tax at the temple, you better have the right type of currency. 
So think about traveling to a different country. If you're going to travel to a different country, you need to exchange your U.S. American money for the exchange for where you're at. When I traveled to Israel, the Holy Lands, I had to transfer my cash into shekels in order to be able to pay for things there. This question is important. It creates a big dilemma because if Jesus says, yes, you should pay the tax, the, those Herodians are going to be like, see, told you so. Just do what our emperor says. Our political ruling is the way. And if Jesus says, no, don't pay the tax, you're not bound religiously to do so. This is just a rule in this area in Jerusalem here. You don't have to do that. Well, that's going to cause some big trouble, right? Not paying attention to the rules for that time and place and to the leaders of that time. So what does Jesus do? He slams on the brake. He doesn't answer the question the way in which we expect. They're looking for pay the tax, don't pay the tax. And either or. Okay? Well, does anybody here know a little bit about paying taxes? Shake your heads. Come on, we all do. For those of you under age 18, you too pay taxes. You buy a Subway sandwich somewhere or a pizza. You go buy a new sweatshirt somewhere, you're paying taxes on that, even if you're not an adult. But as adults in this world, we know what it's like to pay taxes. Federal tax, state tax, county tax, city tax, property tax, social security, sales, fuel, hotel rooms, roadway tolls, you name it, it's taxed and we're paying extra so that those funds can be used, well, we hope to the good of all. But how often do our religious or our moral beliefs get aggravated by how our tax dollars are being used? This is quite a hot topic and dilemma for us to consider. Our religious convictions can get in the way of our civic duty. And our civic duty can get in the way of our religious practices and convictions. Notice how Jesus does not answer. Much like the small child that said, I'm going to hit the brake and not a person, Jesus does the same. He takes a pause. And so we're going to pause for a moment. When you came in to worship this day, you were asked to take a coin out of the bowl. I want to invite you to take that coin out. If it's in your pocket with the rest of your change and it's mixed in here, no worries. Just take a coin out. And I want you to look at it. This is what Jesus did. He said, where's your coin? Let me see it. Because as a Pharisee, their coins would have had the face of Caesar on them. As a Herodian, their coins would have had the face of the Emperor Tiberius on them. A denarius would have Tiberius on the coin. You see a face on the coin, perhaps you know the story of that person or what they did way back when they were still living, to earn their space on that piece of money that we use today. We may or may not agree with what that person did in their time period of service in our world, but that does not change the value of that coin. I know we don't have magnifying glasses in our pews, but stick with me. You'll probably remember this. On your coin, you will find a phrase 
or a word. You will either find in God we trust, if it's an older coin, or you will find the word liberty. Usually on the front, left hand part of the coin. Liberty is defined as the state of being free within a society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority on one's way of life, behavior, or political views. The state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority on one's way of life, behavior, or political views. The word liberty gives us freedom to practice our religious, our own personal religious beliefs, and to have the freedom to have our own personal political and life views. Now where this gets really muddy is that the world in which we live in, we want this or that. We want this to be a black or white world. We don't like to skew the lines together. There's not more than one answer to something, it's this or that. But what if it is both and? Which is exactly how Jesus answered this question. Did you catch it? He says, whose head is on this and whose title? And when they said the emperors, he says, Give, therefore, to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and give to God the things that are God's. Both parties were content with their answer. Because the tax was going to be paid, yet the moral and religious convictions of the religious elite was also being honored. What would it look like in our churches and in our world if it were a both and? We do our best to make everyone happy, yet there's always someone who is not. Someone always thinks a little bit differently than we do. There is very rarely 100% guarantee, yes, we agree on this. And it's okay to disagree. It's okay. It's what we do with that disagreement. Are we still behaving with liberty? Are we allowing someone else to have their freedom while we exercise ours? Are we being like Jesus? Being like the child of God that we are? God created you in God's image. Therefore, God gave you the gifts of discernment and the freedom and the free will to make choices for yourself, your family, your church family, or the community in which you live. But choices always come with consequences, right? Yes. So, how do we deal with the differences? I would encourage us to consider what is worth arguing over and what is not. And so, a few hot topics for us to consider and wrestle with. When do we turn the heat on? When do we not? Are the Christmas tree lights going to be white or colored? Are we having this for dinner or that for dinner? Should the carpet be this color or that color? Should we worship at this time on Christmas Eve or this time on Christmas Eve? Churches can really get into some dilemmas over what is a big topic, but in all of those questions, where is God? 
Does God care what color our Christmas tree lights are? Does God care what time we worship? Does God care what color our carpet is? Does God care what you're eating for dinner? No. We can't take God out of the equation. And that's what Jesus was saying as well. These questions challenge us. So I'm going to dig deeper. Should two people of the same sex be married? Should abortion be legal? Which party is the better party, the Republicans or the Democrats? My neighbors got it wrong. You see the sign in their yard? That's just terrible. I can't stand to be around him or her. We create our own divisions when we remove God and God's love for all people, A-L-L, -L, out of the equation. My fellow siblings in Christ, it's not an either or, it's a both and, and the both and is God's love for you. And if God can love you and God can love me, both sinners who have been forgiven, through the holy sacrament of baptism, through the sacrament of communion, through coming to a space like this and confessing your sin and hearing those words week after week, you are already and will always be forgiven. That is freedom. Freedom to live for love and service to our neighbor. And if that freedom is for you, then that same freedom is for our neighbors who don't look like you, who don't act like you, who don't vote like you, who decorate different than you, who live their lives differently than you. Back to the heart of the coin. Another interesting piece between Pharisees and Herodians is this. Paying that tax and the political power of that day would have kept people who were truly hurting, people who were without aid that they desperately needed. It would keep them in an oppressed state. And this is exactly what's happening in Israel and Palestine right now. The story is big. We won't be able to discuss it in a sermon. But as we pray for our siblings in Christ, as we pray for our neighbors across the globe who are at war, it's not an either or. It's a both and there is always more than one side to every story. And God calls us to listen, to love, and not to lean onto our own understanding, but in all ways to acknowledge God. For God will guide and direct our path.
continue with the prayers of intercession. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Faithful God, your spirit animates the church throughout the world and binds believers near and far into the body of Christ. Equip us for the work of faith and enlarge our hearts for the labor of love. God of grace, hear your prayer. Gracious God, grant peace among nations. Cleanse from our own hearts the seeds of strife, greed, and envy, harsh misunderstandings, and ill will, fear, and the desire for revenge. Make us quick to welcome ventures and cooperation among the peoples of the world, so that they may be woven into the fabric of common good too strong to be torn by the evil hands of war. In the time of opportunity, make us diligent. And in the time of peril, let not our courage fail. God of grace, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, your rule and authority is over the cosmos. As you once worked through the ruler Cyrus, for the good of your people, accomplish your purposes through the work of elected leaders and public servants. Guide them with your wisdom and compassion. God of grace, hear your prayer. Caring God, your arms enfold all who are lonely, oppressed, despairing, sick, and suffering. Pour out your abundant mercy on all whom this world has neglected, abandoned, or gotten, that they may know your joy. God of grace, hear our Almighty God, all our life belongs to you. When earthly idols threaten to lead your church astray, remind us that you alone are the source of our eternal hope. Direct the work of church treasurers and councils and all who manage financial matters. We lift to you Sharon, Bill, Deb, Gary, Lynn, Eric, Dwight, Basil, and Joanne. God of grace, hear us. Everlasting God, the saints of every age have sung your praise and shared your word. We give you thanks for their witness and pray that we may join them as citizens of your unending kingdom. God of grace, hear your word. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we receive your tithes and your offerings that not only help to support the mission and ministry here at St. Paul, but to help support the whole mission of God for the whole people of God.
the power, God of plenty. All, All things, things belong, belong to you. We bring, we bring your gifts to the table, that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to God as we remember. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it and broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The table is set. Christ is the host. Come as you are. All are welcome. Those joining us online, this is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you.
Father's view. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God. For we have feasted on your word, by Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts, strengthened by this food and with your blessings. Send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The glory of God, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.